Hi, and welcome to All Things LGBTQ Plus Youth, Youth Edition. Edition. <laughs> Today is September 10th, 2018. My name is Jules Caserta. I use they, them pronouns. Uh, I'm Jamie Atkinson. I use they, them pronouns. I'm Steve Flora. I use they, them, or she, her. Steve is a nickname, just so you know. Okay. Yeah, and today we will be talking about being closeted, our experiences being closeted, help trying to help people who are closeted at the moment, that kind of stuff. Just that in general. Because we've talked about coming out before, but we've never actually like really talked about what it's like to be like trapped in hell. <laughs> I think that's basically what it is. So I think the first thing we should do is probably talk about our own experiences being in the closet and like what helped us. So Jamie. Oh, okay. Um, I'm currently still like semi closeted, like about my gender. So I mean, yeah. Um, for me, personally, like I guess name wise, I have a very gender neutral name. I was born with a super gender neutral name, but like nicknames, like you know, Steve and Jules. You know, that helps. That can help make someone less dysphoric. Um, I don't know. <laughs> We're not prepared. <laughs> um, Let's not say that next time. No, we can say that. We can say, I, I don't know. I want. Excuse you. Um, I don't experience a ton of dysphoria mm -hmm. generally, but sometimes it's just like it's super intense. Yeah. But um, yeah. So can you like give me a run of like what was going <laughs> through your head when you were in the closet? I I mean wait. Because I'm still technically in the closet. Okay, but so Steve. <laughs> yeah, Steve. Can you like explain to people what it was like and what was going on inside your head? Because I know for me it was a jumbled mess. Um. Well. So. It was like not long after I figured out that there was like, oh hey. What's up? Um, and so. <laughs> Like, I'd, I've talked about this before. Like, I kind of came out on accident, or, like, I was asked if I was gay. I was like, well, I um, guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know. No one besides my friend group really knows about my gender stuff. And none of my family watches this anyway, so <laughs> it's okay. Let's yeah. keep that. Uh, uh, do you mean Oh, I'm good about. I'm fine. I don't really care okay. if they find out. It's just like it's kind Honestly, of um, same. Hmm? We're just like you don't care at that point. We're just like yeah. you know what? You guys can figure it out on same. your own. I if mean, you're yeah. smart enough, there like, you go. My it's parents there. are kind of confused. But <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not. I don't. It's a lot to handle. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. Just be like trying to like figure it out on your own, even though like there is resources for you, you're still doing it by yourself. Like it's not, you're not, you don't have this little guy and it's not telling you like. You're gay. <laughs> I mean, sometimes, but. <laughs> Do you but, have like, little men telling you you're gay? No. Steve's been through some stuff. Um, but I feel like it's kind of a, it's kind of a thing that you have to like, deal with yourself and it's one of those times it can be like really 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 hard and um or it could be like oh answers yeah but i i i'm in between that so. yeah and like i mean it's a different experience for everyone like some people honestly they they figure out who they are and they like come out immediately other people are forced to be in the closet for years and like for me it's just really confusing because like I was in the closet, I wasn't in the closet, where it's like, I didn't hide anything about myself, but like, no one knew, they just couldn't. It was just a mess, and because of that, it was also a mess in my brain, where it was like, what's going on? I don't know who I am, I know who I am, but I don't, these people know who I am, but also they don't, so it's like, how do I communicate? Who can I talk to about this? Who am I allowed to say things to? It was kind of a, okay, I'm a, okay. It was just kind of a, just a big mess, and that's like the, kind of the problem with, well, there's a lot of problems about being in the closet, <laughs> but like for me, my biggest problem was how messy it was, and because of that mess, I felt instantly isolated, where it was like, you're just kind of, it's literally like you are trapped in a closet. It's like small, and you're just like suffocating in the, the clothes, or whatever. The clothes. The clothes, it, well. The closed door. Yeah, it's like you're just trapped, and you're just, just like, 
honestly, for me, it was like I was suffocating in my own lies. Because yeah. it's like I'm lying about who I actually am. Where it's like, yeah, I'm totally female. What? <laughs> I d- yeah, that's definitely my pronoun. You're doing great. Yeah, I think for me, the biggest dysphoria comes from when I'm around other people and they're like gendering me improperly. Um, and I, I don't do too bad when I'm like by myself, you know, just kind of existing and doing my thing. But when I get around other people, uh, especially at school mm-hmm. or like strangers, like just getting randomly gendered by someone, that's, that's tough. Um, but with, with, you know, I'm out at school, but not to my parents. And uh, with my sexuality, like I, our, our QSA had, um, it, it just started the year that I figured out that I was queer, so. That's handy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I went to like the, the meeting and I kind of had this realization through the QSA and I like started to understand myself through the QSA and in a really supportive environment. So I kind of immediately came out when I realized that like in QSA with gender too, but at home it was a much more lengthy lengthy process. But school was really there to help me like figure out who I was and how I identified. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think like QSAs and like that kind oh, yeah. of, it is such good resources. They're so, they're so good. They're so helpful. It's a wonderful resource. Like <clears throat> if your school has it and you're confused in any sense, you don't even have to be queer, you're just confused, yeah. Yeah. go. Even if you're it's, not. Even like, if you're not, even if you're just honestly, an ally. Yeah, I thought I, w- <clears throat> sorry, I thought I was when I like star- started our GSA thing. You thought you were what? That was, I thought it was just an ally, like I said. Like, I thought it was just an ally. Then I go, it's like, oh, mm-hmm. wow, hi. It's like It's like experiencing <laughs> a small version of the community. Right. Where it's like, holy crap, I'm going to be here all the time. Yeah, and then, like, outright Vermont and, like, hearing about that through GSAs, like, or in QSAs are, like, that, that's an incredibly supportive environment. You know, you just go there and you get so validated. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's like, it's like such a, like a shock almost too. Yeah. Like my first GSA meeting in the middle of school again. The I think we were saying about I thought I was straight. Who was that person? We don't talk about that. <laughs> I but then like I went there and I was like, wow, this is like a huge change. Cause it was like I was so used to not ever discussing this kind of stuff. Like I didn't know anything, and then I went to GSA and I was like, what's going on? <laughs> it was like it was like what's going on, but also this is amazing. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of funny. I distinctly rem- remember in like fifth or sixth grade, like uh, being online. I think it was Pinterest actually, um, and I love just Pinterest kind of so much, <laughs> just kind of scrolling through and then like seeing these um, and, and hearing about like lesbian and gay people, and I hadn't really been exposed to that before middle school or before the internet. So being exposed to it through the internet, I you know did some more research, and then I distinctly remember like wanting to be gay like I at that time I, 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 did, so much. I didn't think I was but I distinctly <laughs> like remember you being, to. Be, being disappointed when I thought that I wasn't I do get that like I used to like think <laughs> lesbians were so cool I know they're like coolest and I'm people like, yes now I am it's like oh <laughs> it's so much wow. fun yeah 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 and also you were talking a little bit about like sexual like coming out in that sense that for me was like relatively easy compared to coming out gender yeah. wise gender is a lot more complicated I especially like, with the yeah the with constant who, like yeah especially for nb life. people too oh like yeah. a new kind of concept it's like yeah not as mainstream as like bisexuality or pansexuality yeah my dad has a lot of trouble with um they them pronouns and that's mm-hmm. a large part of why i'm not like out to him yet. yeah so like i but like for, for me like I figured out I was definitely not straight, like sexuality-wise, and I was like, okay, that's cool. Like, I mean, I knew that when I was in like fourth grade, because I just would stare at girls, and I was like, wow. <laughs> you had a sexual awakening that early. You always remember the the girl who made you realize for me. Like, I always, I still remember her to this day. She's still gorgeous to this day, and I will never forget. Mm, I know what? you're talking. I, about. I didn't have a girl who made me realize. Oh no. I just like saw her one day in my class and I was like, like wow holy crap I'm not straight yeah no I guess it wasn't until like recently that I was like really affirmed in my 
mm -hmm. gender. Um, and, you know, like, after, like, dating someone and who wasn't a boy, <laughs> um, it, it's kind of interesting, actually, because I feel like a lot of LGBTQ plus people in the past had to, like, grow up being, you know, one of their first people that they dated wasn't someone that they would have dated by choice. But, you know, the first person that I dated was a girl, so. How do you date someone not by choice? No, no, like, um, they have to, like, like they weren't out dating. at the first. Okay, at the time. it wasn't like the gender that I would yeah. date. Yeah, like, um, for a gay guy, you know, like, maybe he grew up dating girls mm -hmm. and then didn't realize that he liked boys until later. But, um, you know, I, I dated a girl, and then it wasn't really until recently that I realized that I can't really imagine myself, like, being with a guy and how that's kind of just, like, an uncomfortable feeling. <laughs> yeah, and, like, like, I had that kind of, like, awakening, and then, like, I wasn't in a closet for a super long time. Like, I think I came out in seventh grade, so it was, like, fourth to seventh grade. But it wasn't as big of a deal for me as gender. Because, like, gender, it's like you're always being misgendered. You're always being used the wrong name. So it was a lot more prevalent with, like, sexuality. It was like, if someone asks me, I'm going to say that I am, like, bi, because I thought I was bi. Like, it wasn't as overwhelmingly I am stuck in the closet. It was more like, you know what? If a girl wanted to date me, then I would date her, but no girl wants to date me, so, like, it's fine. <laughs> um, no girl wants to date you. That's true. No girl does okay. want to date me, but, like, that's not always a huge issue. But, like, when okay. it came to, like, being closeted gender-wise, it was, like, it literally felt like crushing weight on you 24-7. It just, and I honestly think that might have been because it was just so more prevalent. But, like... See, the thing is, like, discovering who you are is always great. Like, that moment where it's like, wow, I'm gay, wow, I'm non-binary. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it's much better. And then it's just a shit show afterwards. Am I allowed to say shit? I did. <laughs> and it's, like, great, horrible, hopefully great at some point, maybe. Because obviously, like, a lot of, we aren't adults yet, so we don't know if it gets better. We hope it does. At least I hope it does. I think it does. And I think until, like, senior year of high school, it's going to be super shitty. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't be expecting too much. Yeah. I mean, of course, so, out, you have to be, have really low expectations. Yeah, some, th some great things are probably going to happen, but, like, you got to keep your expectations mm -hmm. low from what I've, from what I understand. I'm, I'm not, I haven't entered high school yet, You'll so I have no idea, but, like. It's better than middle school. It's so much better than middle school. <laughs> Well, that's, a, yeah. that's a tangent we don't need to go into. Yes. Um, I think it's just, I think it's kind of, you have to lower your expectations. Not saying that yeah. you need to lower your expectations for everything, but, like, you can't let that affect, like, how you're mm -hmm. thriving, I guess. I, I don't know. But, like, I don't know if I'm saying that Especially right. with gender. Um, it's kind of funny. I, I came out and now... In my grade, I guess I'm, like, kind of the gay kid. Yeah, that's, like, which who is, you become. Yeah, it, it, which is, you know, pretty refreshing, you know. I make gay jokes, they laugh. They make gay jokes, I laugh. It's, you know, not, like, bad gay jokes, you know. They're, they're funny, you know, like, not a straight line type thing. But um, I've had a lot more trouble with gender. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, like, for me, like, I think I'm similar about with you where I'm still like kind of out with gender, but I'm also like kind of not. Yeah. Where it's like people know, like I'm essentially, essentially I am out. It's just people don't use the right pronouns. Yeah, it's which not is, like yeah. a respected thing. Yeah, but you like they're they aware. are aware of it, but they just don't care. I think part of it is too they don't know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, I think I have like a lot of cis straight friends who just don't know how to respect pronouns and don't know how to be a good ally, you know? Mm -hmm. um, even if, like, someone's tried to tell them, it just, for them, it's a pretty unknown yeah. place and it's, you know, confusing, so. Yes. I get that, but, you know. Yeah, so I got questions for you, too. You, too. Oh, okay. Both of you. It's questions for everyone, essentially. Were there, like, tips or tricks or like habits such as helped you when you were in the closet because like i know for me i had a bunch of like rituals or whatever you want to call them that like help me be able to like not die like in terms of what like emotional stuff mm -hmm. like anything because like 
okay. I would, I would like tips for me. Would, I would refer to myself in the third person with the right pronouns for the right name in my head. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. Or be that like, a lot. they're going into school. Yeah, that kind of could, stuff. You, like correct your pronouns for yourself in your head, or and if you misgender yourself, mm -hmm. treat it as if you're misgendering someone else. You know, yeah. like really make an effort to correct yourself in your head. Um, yeah, cause that's like also a huge thing too. Cause I still misgender myself yeah. to this day. Cause it's just like, oh, I haven't been on that long. <laughs> Where it's just like. It just, like, my brain is like, what? Yeah. Um, I think, sorry. Mm -mm, it's, no, okay. Um, <laughs> you can both talk. Okay. I, I follow a lot of, like, really um, inspirational and really, like, affirming uh, LGBTQ, well, specifically non-binary people online, and a lot of non-binary people who are really comfortable, um, even though they were born one gender, like, embodying both. And for me, that's, like, been a big struggle, like, I, I tend to push to be more masculine to, like, combat being born female. And, like, trying to get comfortable with more feminine things like dresses and makeup has been, like, a big struggle, struggle because those are typically feminine-associated and, mm -hmm. you know, so. But, like, following those people online has, like, really helped me understand that non-binary is more than you know, for, for me at least, is more than just being masculine. So I have a question for how you identify with non-binary. Kind of they're like, it's kind of thing. people feel like they have both genders, they have no gender. What would you describe it as? Like both genders, no gender, um, nothing? Like I, I tend to yeah. go with a gender just because... So like the absence of gender. Yeah, yeah, I don't really feel a strong sense of gender at all. I just kind of, you know exist kind of or mad. whatever yeah just it's like i don't care but i don't want you to do, you, use this like yeah you do but you don't care it's I like I, I care being i care being labeled as something i'm not but i don't care as long as it's fairly mm -hmm. vague yeah yeah i never like for me it was always like I'm not, it was just confusing in the, when I, when I was closeted, because obviously I'm still like trying to fit, like closeted is still kind of, you're trying to figure yourself out, you have like an idea, but it's kind of like, how do I really put a label onto this? Yeah. So for me it was kind of like, I am both, just, like, because it was like some days I'm really masculine, some days I'm really feminine, and it's like, how do I turn that into a presentation kind of thing? Yeah, I, I've had um some trouble like with myself trying to, uh, identify as trans. Also oh, have I. <laughs> like, because I don't feel, you know, I feel like that's a word dedicated more to people who are, you know, trans more towards one gender than another. And as a non-binary person, it kind of feels like I'm, I'm taking that lab label away. I mean, part of it is also that it doesn't really, like, jive with me. Like, I really like the word non-binary um, more than, like, gender queer, for example. Um, but I prefer gender queer. Yeah, and I don't know why. I just like the, maybe it's the that there's a like a f like there's no friendly. gender in it. Well, Is yeah, it but like it's like there's a like a friendly version of like NB. Mm -hmm. You know, like I don't know. I, it just feels right. Yeah. More than gender queer. Yeah, for and like example. I understand what you're saying about the trans thing, which I've talked about before. It's like. You're not like for me. It might not be the same as like I'm taking a label away. It's just like I never. I'm still female to an extent like I still I like part of me is still female and will always be female but then there's just more parts of me that are also man ma man <laughs> that is also masculine and also like nothing yeah see I, I don't really feel a, a part of me is female at all or mm -hmm. male at all so mm -hmm. I guess that's kind of why any like he him or she her pronouns just generally don't feel right at mm -hmm. all because I don't really feel like anything. It sounds so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of going back to more like tips for closeted people, are there any like, cause are there any like small things that help you? Like, cause like I've heard that like people will use different names at coffee shops or they'll use a preferred name. They're looking at me accusing me cause I didn't use my actual name at a coffee shop once. <laughs> okay, but like, or, like that kind of thing, like painting your nails with clear polish to make you feel more feminine or, wear, or like growing your hair out or not shaving. Is it, Did you guys ever partake in any of that? Any like smaller things that help eliminate your dysphoria slightly? Yes. What were they? Um, 
I don't shave my legs very much. People like because well, razors are annoying. First of all, yeah, yeah, but like I feel like shaving your legs is typically stereotyped as like something all females should do. Yeah, but like it's bullshit. I it's actually bullshit. don't care. <laughs> It's like, like, you naturally have hair there. Point, What's the issue? There's a point where I will do it, mm -hmm. like, because if I do end up doing it later, it's going to be a struggle. And, like, the hair falls in the shower, it's, like, nasty. my razor and yeah. it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I don't, I also, like, I kind of want to just, like, answer one of those questions, too, yeah. before. Um, like, I don't, I, I believe in, like, I don't really like to say that I'm more masculine or feminine. I like to go with what I'm feeling mm -hmm. in the moment. Like, I'm a very electric person. I'm not trying to be, like, cocky or anything. But, like, <laughs> I like You're eccentric thing. Yes, that's that's what I've been described as. Like, I'm kind of... Oh, like, you're just, like, loud and, like, poppy and, like, that kind of stuff. Sometimes. Is that but, what you're, I don't like, understand I, what you're trying to like, say. Like, I'm trying to get into that. <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm sorry. I'm, I'll stop talking. I'm eccentric, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I'm, like, I like exciting things and I'm like I, that's what that's what's been used to like describe me before I guess I don't know but like it's kind of like I don't mind wearing like fun colors of like lipstick and like I mean you're wearing crocs right now so. I am wearing crocs right yellow they're crocs. wearing crocs. um it's an issue it's an issue it's I don't like an crocs. Issue? Oh my God. it looks like a okay. clog and swish cheese combined <laughs> No offense, I just hate Crocs. Um, but I don't. Oh my God. I will wear like a like a button down shirt and pants, mm -hmm. or I'll wear like not like a dress, but like a plain one. Like it's not. I don't. I bounce a lot between the things because like, I don't really care. It's what I like. I'm not thinking about other people mm -hmm. or what other people want to hear. I'm thinking about what I want to be and how I want to come off and. I guess I don't know. God, so I wish like, I had that confidence. <laughs> I try. <laughs> it's 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 a struggle, but it's it's yeah. I. That's what I want to do. Like, I. I want people to know me as me. Like I don't want. I don't. I don't want to say like. Oh, like you know, I'm not like. I'm getting annoyed because I can't do this, but like, it's. I only like I ask for things. Like, when I just want to, like, it's mostly just when I want to, like, express myself more. That's when I mostly, like, ask for things is just ways to help me, like, be my best self. And it doesn't always matter with appearance. It's kind of, it's also it just, it kind of helps me feel better. And it helps me feel like, oh, okay, I'm kind of starting to be the person I'm wanting to be. Mm -hmm. So... That's that. Yeah, yes. back, back to the hair thing. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought I'd bring it back. Yeah, um, go ahead. So when I get my hair cut, um, or, like, uh, sometimes I, like, cut, like, my neck, like, the hair on my neck just to, like, bring it down some mm -hmm. um, at home. And, like, when I'll do that, like, I have peach fuzz, so I'll, like, go, at, you know, the razor with that, which is kind of fun. Um, and then, again, like, leg hair, you know, just, like, letting that grow. And if, you, if you're afraid to do that, I guarantee, like, nobody cares. Yeah. It's also, I was it's so afraid of too. everyone it's, caring. It's, like, I, after you let it grow, it's not. No one cares. Grow. I promise yeah. you. Plus, it's soft. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's really <laughs> soft. My, um, I was babysitting one time, and my, the, the, like, the kid, yeah, he was, like, he was, like, petting my leg, and he was, like, this is really fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> it was super sweet. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, I was I was really afraid to like not shave my legs once I started because I was like, mm -hmm. oh no, people are gonna care. They don't. Yeah. They really don't. Um, and a lot of the reason that I felt I needed to shave in the first place was because of my sister. Uh, it was like a rite of passage in my family. It was weird. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, she she was just like over at our house one time, and she's like twenty eight. Um, and she was over at our house one time, and she was like, I was about your age when I started shaving. I was like, okay. And then, so I kind of did it for a while, and then I kind of had this, like, NB realization, and I was like, why? Yeah. Like, it takes so much work. Why would I keep doing this? So, so pointless. 
<laughs> like I shaved like obvi- I, like I hit my armpit for like tank top reasons, but like I stopped shaving my legs for a little while, and I was like, this is it's so much easier. I took so- my showers were so short, it was amazing. I still had hot water left. It was really fun, but like moving on from like hair. Oh wait, um, hold on real quick, and just hair in general. Like you can do a lot with like the hair on your head, mm-hmm. you know. Well, like, especially if you're less historic. I cut my hair. And that was like, oh wow! It was literal weight off my shoulders, like yeah. with the gender, and I just had a lot of hair. O- oddly enough, hair was kind of my also my NB realization, you know. Same. <laughs> no one like sense, s- in like mm-hmm. sixth grade. Um, I was from like when I when I went into middle school, I kind of over that summer I cut my hair just because I wanted to, you know, no reason besides I, it felt like it, um, and. From, you know, from there I ended up, like, wearing button-downs a lot in 6th and 7th grade, like, a lot. Button-downs are so helpful. Like, I became obsessed with them. I kind of phased out of that now, Mm -hmm. but, um, and I didn't realize until after I was NB that I was, like, Like subconsciously dressing and presenting the way I wanted to before I knew what it was. And, you know, no one really cared. Because my parents, you know, they're they're yeah. super cool, and they were like, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> yeah, and like another thing for like dysphoria, especially if you're still closeted, baggy button downs, button them oh, all the yeah. way up. Oh perfect. yeah, it's so helpful. You feel snow so snazzy too. I, you feel really snazzy. <laughs> like for like gra- graduation in uh, middle school, Ooh, I yes. didn't want to. It was such a good outfit. So you apparently really such liked it. I didn't want to wear a dress. I did not want to walk down the cheesy red carpet because literally they rolled out a red carpet. I'd be all to walk in pairs to the beat of music. It was intense. But I was like, I'm not wearing a dress to this. I don't like dresses. I feel uncomfortable in dresses. I would have to shave and I just don't want to do it. So I, instead of doing that, I got a blazer on and I felt so much amazing. The minute I put it on, I was like, Wow. wow, what is this? I don't feel so girly or feminine anymore. It was so helpful. So like small things like that, cause like I still looked fairly feminine, cause like an acceptable thing now for women to wear blazers, even though it should have been acceptable. It's it was still like a fairly feminine thing. So it was like if I, since I was still technically in the closet, it was like it's okay. People are still seeing me as a female. I'm not afraid of that, but I'm comfortable now. Where it's like, cause I didn't. Obviously, I want people to be able to see me as the gender that I am, but it was like, I'm not out, so I want to yeah. hide it. And then, like, the same, I wore a really tight sports bra that day, too, where sports bras also, if you can't bind or you're not able to bind, just get sports bras. Like, they're not the same thing, but they're really helpful. Oh, and um, for trans femme people, <laughs> uh, getting, like, the, the kind of doing, like, the reverse of a sports bra, like, getting... Um, Push up bras? Yeah, yeah, like push-up bras or bras that come with like extra padding and like shoving it in there. You know, I did that as a kid. <laughs> I was just a confused child and I put toilet paper in my bra. Sure, toilet paper if it doesn't look too lumpy. It looked really lumpy. Okay, maybe not toilet paper. I was with paper. my friend looking at the was crazy. It was fun. Maybe not toilet paper. Um, Cotton balls? I'm just trying to think of things I can make <laughs> boobs out of. But, you know, like... Um, <laughs> Something like that I mean, might I help. Right now. I, I, I seem to forget that I'm being filmed when I'm here, and I just talk. <laughs> I think that's the point, though. Like, we're here to talk about things and share, like, our mm-hmm. experiences. We're going to talk about some uncomfortable open, things. Openly, yeah. That I wouldn't usually talk about with a lot of people. Huh? A lot of these things I wouldn't usually talk about with a lot of people, so it's nice to, like, the, I'm just saying it's nice to have But this. see, that's what the LGBTQ Yes, 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 four. Yes, yes. Okay, so validating. validating. <laughs> yeah, so let me just quickly get to my notes because my phone turned off. Oops, Daisy, keep talking. So, um, tips for like mental health. Because we talked about like relieving some dysphoria. What did you guys do when you were in the closet to like save your mental health? Because like wh- I, I journaled a lot, I would write down what I was feeling, I thought of names. So I could have a name the minute I wanted to like come out. So like, what did you get? Please help me carry the conversation. I was blessed with an incredibly gender neutral name. Mm-hmm. So, so like, happy, but my middle name I'm pretty dysphoric about. So um, I kind of got to a point and I ended up like looking up some uh, more gender neutral versions of my middle name, but that um, were pretty similar because my my initials like mean a lot to my dad because 
they were the initials that my grandmother had and that my dad had mm -hmm. and that I had. So, like, I definitely want to keep my initials. But, you know, coming up with a name that sounds similar to my middle name. So I kind of have one, but, like, mm -hmm. it's, like, tucked away and like, for me. <laughs> did you do anything for, like, journaling or, like, anything that just helped your mental health? Or is it it's just a mess? I mean, I kind of have, I don't like journal constantly, but mm -hmm. I kind of have this, you know, this little journal that has like a couple of entries and whenever I'm feeling like something super intense and I like, or like, you know, really angry or feel like I need to give an update on my life, I'll like go in there and, you know, get some stuff down. And that's kind of been cool to look back on over the years. That I, I have a journal that I've kept since like, I think fifth grade and like, you just see me, like, most of it, like, the beginning is just me complaining to my sister. No offense, Ev, I love you, but we're siblings, so we kind of hate each other, but we still love each other, the thing. And, like, then it just slowly progressed, and it became, like, the trans journal. It's, like, it's slowly, it kind of got more depressing, too. Which is just, but it was, like, it just, you could slowly, like, see the different phases of my life, where it's, like, I'm just a little kid. I'm gonna complain about things, because that's just what I wrote in my journal for. And then, like, it just slowly became, like, a mess. And, um, what was I gonna say? And I, okay, so this is kind of sound a little weird in the beginning. I read something recently where you envision the negative thoughts in, like, you envision a brain, essentially, like, your brain, and you envision the negative thoughts, and you literally imagine pulling them out of your head, which I tried doing. It sounds a little weird, but, like, you it makes like, sense. It's like these little like dark black thoughts like running through. You know how like brains have those line thingies on them? Like running through that. And I tried it and I imagined pulling it out like it was a worm stuck in there. And I actually felt better. Which is strange. But that's something I've never heard, I've never heard of. And I just share it because it was fun. Yeah, that's <laughs> interesting. It's... They also talked about doing it with physical pain. But like I can't really be one to discuss physical pain. But what about you, Sid? Did you do anything when you were causing it to help your mental health? Um, <laughs> well, I, music is kind oh my of God. my life. I'm, I'm one who believes very much that music is a very healing thing. Like, there's so many different types of music. Mm -hmm. Like, actually, <laughs> if you, like, Anything you could pretty much imagine, it's probably a thing. I think that's amazing because, like, you, you are, like, so unique and individual. Like, you, you can't, like, be told what to like. Like, that's, that just doesn't make sense. But, like, music, you don't have to be, like, criticized. You might be, but you don't need to pay attention to it because you can just go off, put your headphones in, listen to music, and I think that's like a wonderful thing that we can like have that access now. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, music can be super therapeutic. Yeah, I like whether you're crying to it or dancing around. I do that a lot. Um, <laughs> Which one? Both. Um, mm -hmm. Mostly dancing. I like dancing. But that's good. Um, <laughs> um, but it's just I'm explore music is what I'm saying because it's so incredibly important for anyone, not just someone who's like a, an extreme fan of it or whatever, but like for anyone, like just go and listen to music that you've never heard before and it's, mm -hmm. it's great. See, I agree with that, but also when I was like really sad for a day, like I would kind of use that negatively where I literally had a playlist where it was like, here are all the things that are like, they make me feel worse in like an oddly satisfying way. It's like kind of like, it's like, it just kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. I always use it in like a more of a negative sense, which isn't good, but. So make sure you're using don't your do music that. positively. Don't do that. Yes. Don't do what I do, do essentially. I'm not one to talk about mental health. Be smart Jamie, about it. Jamie, you don't need to call me out, man. I'm calling you out. You always call me out, this is an issue. Why wouldn't I? I do. Okay, but like. Yeah, I But like, that. I just like honed in like on that really negativeness and eventually it kind of just went away once I like just like pushed it into a ball and I was like made it like 
and, and it's the, yeah like but like I don't know it was just really satisfying to like and like kind of like cathartic to like focus on it and like yeah and like sometimes focusing on like what's negative and trying to work through it even you know with music and even if it makes you sadder for a time as long as it like goes away and mm-hmm. yeah I I like I said be responsible about like pick something to listen to that isn't depressing if that's what you think you need well like too depressing you know like if you're like in like a terrible terrible place i'm not saying like you should listen to bad music by the no, way no, 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 i'm no. just saying that i have yeah, used no. that yeah. music sense yeah that's i'm i'm just trying i don't know if i'm wording it right i'm just trying to like get it like just be cautious of like what you're listening to because i i'm not gonna go in depth to, with this but like i last year i was like really not great time of life a lot of things were happening and i listened to this one song it's really depressing um mm-hmm. the suicide hotline is the name of the title um and then i almost went and did something really stupid uh, because of listening to that song mm-hmm. so i uh, just be smart um don't make a choice that you're gonna regret because I know this is not relevant to what we're talking about, but I just want to say if you if you're having self-doubt and you think that you're invalid and like not worth being here, rethink that because if you weren't worth being here, you wouldn't have born to start with. Like if your life wasn't worth it, you wouldn't be here. Like to begin with. Um so just keep that in mind like you are valued you are valid you are all of the above and you deserve positive things like even if it's like really hard and you just feel like you can't make it you can do it like find something that makes you happy whether it's someone something and just stick to that until you can figure out another plan for something that makes you happy and I think I think knowing that made me feel a little bit better just kind of having that mindset of i don't know but yeah mm-hmm. do you, okay so you kind of mentioned self-doubt and i would like to kind of delve into that a little bit more especially when it comes to like closeted and like gender because there i think for me there's so much so much self-doubt especially in gender and i was like maybe i'm not maybe i'm just a masculine woman. Especially as a non-binary person. person. Because, like, there's just... And even in sexuality, there's, like, just in the closet, and even when you're out of the closet, it's still, like, constant, constant, constant self-doubt. And I... Something that I kind of did that kind of pertains to this is I would... I would be lying in bed just, like, depressed, like, out of my mind. I would be so upset, and I would be trying to fall asleep because, like, sleep is nice, and you can break it out thanks for a little while. And what I would do is I would... In, to like make myself feel better, I would imagine what I wanted my life to be when I was older. I imagine people using the right pronouns. I imagine people using the right name. I imagined this like kind of utopia of what I wanted to do, who I wanted to be. I imagined how I looked. I imagined it all, and it just gave me like something to hold on to with like the self doubt and the feelings of worthlessness and the feelings of wanting to like that you're not supposed to be here, that kind of stuff. I like just clung to that for dear life and I was like I need to get to this point I need to be able to experience this at some point like good things will come you just need to look at it and focus on it and do what you can and just power through Mm -hmm. I know I know it's not that just does it doesn't it sounds simple and I know it's not simple but but it's so worth it but also if you simplify it in your brain it becomes a whole lot easier like for, for me it was like Every single day, it was just get through this day, get through this day, every single day. So just get through this day, you can be sad tomorrow. Get through this day, you can be sad tomorrow. And I just kept saying that every day. Mm-hmm. And eventually, I just simplified it as much as possible. And I was like, okay, that's a simple task. I can do that. And then I just kept doing that same simple task over and over and over again until, honestly, I'm not to the place where I want to be. I don't think a lot of us are. Because of how young we are, it's kind of difficult to get to the place where we want to be. But until I got to a better place. Where, where it, so 
it is totally not simple but if you do kind of just like break it down it's like a sentence you can kind of it feels less crushing and easier to deal with Okay, um, so I think like? that maybe Wait, we should talk about, like, finding, like, what you like and what you kind of, what you use to express yourself. And just kind of tips for that. Like, yeah. what do you recommend doing for, like, figuring out what clothes you like, what color do you want your hair to be like what <laughs> i don't know just like random things like that like just kind of being able Tried to so many colors in my hair with self-expression yeah self-expression yeah. thank you but, so much yeah <laughs> so i can i was like i can say that i can express myself pretty freely but when i was kind of in the closet it's a lot harder to be able to express yourself freely so like I did. I would do like small things where like I kept my nails really short because I just picked them nervously. That wasn't like a thing, but I just keep my nails really short. I stopped shaving. I like what, cut my me? hair. What? What me? You have nasty nails. Moving on. <laughs> so, or like small. Or like I would like use my dad's kind of cologne or deodorant to like make myself feel kind of more masculine in a c- way that people couldn't tell, where it wasn't a huge thing. Like people couldn't tell that I was questioning. I didn't know that I wasn't that I wasn't a girl, so I could still feel like I'm. I could still feel like safe, but, but like more comfortable in who I am. We should make a deodorant for non-binary people. Deodorant shouldn't Tom's, be gen- Tom's, Tom's deodorant. Are gender? Well, yes. No. Aren't think gender. about it. Scents aren't gendered. Well, toothpaste isn't gendered. That's true. Conditioner but, isn't gendered. But Stop Old Spice, things. Old Spice has, has. I'm sorry. I'm well, not Tom. I have issues. Um, no, but like a super gender neutral deodorant is Tom's. They make. I smell I that nice. deodorant with a fiery yeah. passion. Tom's? Yes. Why? It's nasty. It smells so good. It's moving nasty. on. And it's super gender neutral. Okay. <laughs> that was my phone. Okay. It's fine. Yeah, edit a lot it doesn't of break. This is what happens when I'm leading. Oh, okay. Um, that's right. Uh, finding right. what you need to express. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, I kind of had my gender awakening from, like, I didn't even realize it. Like, it just kind of happened. And looking back, I was like, wow. Like, you look back and you realize like, how wow. gay you actually yeah. were. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I cut my hair just because I wanted to. And... I think if you have like parents that can that that don't really mind you cutting your hair, or you can convince to let you cut your hair, you know. I cut my hair myself in my room. I grabbed something and I was like, I'm doing this now. So don't like, do that. Don't don't do that. Um, that's a Why bad not? idea. Um, that's a bad idea. It's gonna okay, look horrible. You wouldn't let me do that. So don't be a hypocrite. What do you mean? I tried to cut my hair. Remember? Don't yes. do that. <laughs> Are go you to, saying go, I don't look go good? Go to a professional. Are you saying no. I don't look good? No. You look lovely, Jules. Go to a professional. <laughs> um, you know what? And ooh, for sponsored. like transmasculine people, uh, go to a barber, for example. Um, if yes. you know, if your parents are comfortable with that, like. Uh, Why are barbers and salons gendered? Why is everything gendered? Well, let's just not like get into that. I went to my dad's barber um, fairly early on, and you know, he wasn't like. The hairdresser I was looking for, but it's you know, start. it was. I yeah. went to the barber and no one really cared. Mm-hmm. Um, so you Should know, it's. Be a gender? Sorry. I agree. Sorry, we're I'm not sorry. talking about that. You know. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, like sh- don't don't if you can avoid it, don't shop in like stores, because they're what? super. No, no, I mean like in-person stores. You online shopping. You want people to online shop. Well, okay, maybe like try thrift shopping well, better or something. I don't know. Physical. Online do stores saying? have a lot of genders. And you don't have to go into a male or female dressing room if yeah. you're not comfortable with that. Um, wait, yeah, wait, what? You, where do you go that has gendered dressing rooms? It's just a fitting room. Everywhere. It just says fitting room. Oh my gosh. But, a lot of places. But, I, <laughs> but like you were talking about like experimenting and trying to figure them out. I did that with my hair, I did it myself. Don't so do it, that. I looked good. Excuse me. I'm did. sure you, you did. did. So, okay. So, I... Hmm. 
Okay, I um, cut my own hair. I slowly went shorter and shorter, which I just think it's funny to watch the progression. Oh yeah, I can tell how old I was in a picture by what length my hair was. That's not what I'm, I'm talking about. I'm sorry, okay. but it's really cool. Like my hair was here when I first cut it, and every year it's slowly gotten shorter. Yeah, it just so I it's used to hilarious. have hair down to my waist. Like when I started eighth grade, I had oh, yeah, really and then it, long hair. It was like here, and then it was here, it and then it was slowly progressed, here. and half of it was gone. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh. So I experimented a ton where like I had like here, then it was, then it was, then I just shaved half of it. You, okay. Can I talk about why I shaved half of it? Yes. I did it because I, for a while, I didn't have a, a way to describe my gender. So I was like, I'm too gender. Which is totally possible. That's so cool. Which is why I did like half of me is male, half of me is female. Oh my God, a little gay. Whoa. I, my I never love. told anyone why I did, that I did that. That's so, like, a tip in my for you brain, out was, there. Like, all, all of you beautiful people, shave half your head, half male, half female. Figure Boom. it out. Or you could do like a bowl cut, actually. You do <laughs> no. the bottom. <laughs> Don't tell okay. people to get bowl cuts. Um, next, uh, how about it's hair dye? The oh my That's god, I love thing, hair I dye. Like. So, um, I've actually I'm, never dyed my hair. I'm, I'm working on dyeing mine. Bleach. I'm still the trying heck? to convince. That's mine. bleach. It's more colorful. Actually, I guess brown. I have dyed it. Sweetie. I haven't added an unnatural. Color. Anyways, Sorry, I'm still working on. <laughs> I'm still working on convincing my parental to let me dye my oh hair. My you could always I just be write. edgy and do it yourself I, at home. I'm going to. Actually, I'm gonna let a friend do it. I had to. That's write what I've done. Sorry. Oh my God. Continue, Jules. I had to write an essay to convince my mom to let me dye my hair. Actually, it if worked. you're trying to convince your parents to do something. Write them an essay. Because the fact like you're well smart. written. Yeah, because not only will they respect the fact that you wrote an essay, they will think that you're ridiculous for spending that much time on it and mm -hmm. be like, okay, mm -hmm. I give up, fine, you're right. Plus, if there's actual facts in there, then then you're just convincing I, them with an well, essay. I did an annotated bibliography. That's extra. I I helped with that biblio bibliography. <laughs> you guys are what extra. Did? Yes, I did. What are you talking about? I helped with that bibliography, I remember. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Okay, back to hair dye. But like, yeah, I experimented with a bunch of crazy colors. Like, I've had a bunch of colors. Like, I went purple, blue, red, back to purple. Out. This was not meant to be purple. First of all, it was meant to be black. We don't talk about it. It's yeah, I purple. I've done like bits mm -hmm. of my hair. That's why some of it's like lighter colors. But like all of a sudden, my mom's like, I don't know how comfortable I feel with you dyeing like all of your hair because. Like, First off, why do parents care? It's I mean, my body. And leave me alone. The only way for me to know, like, if I don't want it, is for me to learn. Like, then just plus, shave your head. You can always it. just cut it off later. And, and I'm that's not, what I I'm did. like, I I don't. I'm not doing my entire head. I'm doing like most of it. <laughs> like I'm doing like <laughs> most of it. So it's fine. Right. Um, so but I don't understand that like. She was totally chill with it, like, then, but I feel like she has, like, a suspicion I'm doing it for, so, like, something else. We've gone on a lot of tangents. Yeah. And I would like to end this with li just saying a so simple... Are ending it? What about hair dye? I wanted to continue the conversation Who's on the hair leader dye? here? Who is in the chair? I mean, you were the I like hair dye. I really enjoy hair dye. We can talk about hair dye when the cameras are no longer rolling. Okay, that's fair. Yes. So, to end this, I want us to go... Through the, starting from Steve but to me, just a simple sentence that you want people to walk away hearing in their brain. Whoa, what? I'm not ready. I'm starting. I can start. I love starting. Then can I go ahead. last? Um, no, we're not going, Steve. Me. Can we not go on anymore? Rants. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, I think. I don't know why people watch this. You're valid. Be you. Don't let people that are being hateful get in your way, because you're like yourself and they're not you. This is more than one sentence. Yeah, um, but it's okay. We have like. And then also, minutes, also just be like, be ready for anything, but also be ready to fight. <laughs> Whoa! Like, just be ready to explain why. Like verbally, not physically. No. Violence isn't the answer. Fight for what you think you need. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> um. Again, like what Steve said, you're valid and amazing and. Lovely, and surround yourself with people that remind you that you're valid, and amazing, and lovely, and you know because it, that really, really helps. And even if you can't be yourself all the time, find some safe people who you can, because that will really help you. Mm -hmm. The closet clip. <laughs>
<laughs> Get that out. Are you possible? <laughs> the closet kills, and if you're claiming to care about someone, don't force them into a closet. But also, if it's going to endanger your safety... Don't do it. Like... Do it if okay. you can. Well, you're do like taking if, away yeah. the intensity of my statement. So like, if I'm sorry, coming okay. out of the closet is a really intense thing, and do it on your own time. Mm-hmm. But also, don't just have someone into a closet. Yeah. yeah. So, last thing I want to say, and then we'll end this, is the tips and things we talk about. We talk about a lot. It does not pertain to everyone. Our closet experiences do not pertain to everyone. It is not the same for everyone. It'll probably be very different for anyone who's in the closet who is watching this. Yeah. Now I would like to end this. This has been All Things LGBTQ Plus Youth Youth Edition. Edition. We will see you next month. Thank you for watching. Hopefully we'll see you next month. Bye. Bye.